Welcome to this lecture series in group theory. In this lecture, we will be discussing some abstract example of subgroups of a group. Uh, I don't want to recall anything because uh, we don't need anything exactly. Uh, here are the problems and now let us get started with the material of this lecture. So first we will define the center of a group. So let G be a group and X and Y be two elements of G. We say that X and Y commute if X, Y equals Y, X. We saw this definition earlier, but it's good to recall it. Uh, the center of G is defined as well, the notation is Z of G or Z of G as those elements such that G commutes with every element of the group. So another way to write this would be G in G such, such that GX equals XG for all X in G. Right, so that's the center of a group. And uh, here is a property. So G be any group, then the center is an abelian subgroup of G. So it is first of all a subgroup. Further, it is an abelian group in its own right. The proof is very simple. So let's see why this is a subgroup. So let, maybe let's say G1 and G2 are in the center. So let's see why their product is in the center. So let X in G be arbitrary. And here is the computation. So G1, G2 is the product of the two things. This times X is also G1, G2, X by associativity, which is equal to G1, X, G2, which again by associativity is G1, X, G2, which by commuting property is that. And I'll put a bracket again. So clearly G1, G2 commutes with X. And since X was arbitrary, we see that G1, G2 is in the center of the group. Similarly, if G is in the center, then G inverse is in the center. I leave this as an exercise. So this shows that uh, Z of G is a subgroup of G. Why is it abelian? Well, that's very clear because if G1 and G2 are in the center of G, then just we want to show that they commute. That's what an abelian group is, where any two elements commute. So if G1 and G2 are in Z of G, then, then just think of this as G1 being in Z of G and G2 being just some element of G. That's how we, we think about it. And since G1 is in the center, it is supposed to commute with everything in G. So in particular, we get that. That's it. That's why it, it is an abelian subgroup. All right. So a little bit more relaxed notion is that of the centralizer of an element. Or maybe I shouldn't say relaxed notion, but a related notion. So fix a group G and some element in the group X. Uh, we define the centralizer of X. I did not highlight, I think. The centralizer of X is defined as, the notation is this. Those elements in the group which commute with X. Right, so that's the centralizer of X. And if S is just any subset of the group, then the centralizer of S is defined as the notation being this, as those elements in G which commute with every element of S. which of course is nothing but the intersection of the centralizers. Right? Okay, and here is the this one easy thing. So this is an exercise. Show that the centralizer of any subset is a subgroup. And to do that, one just needs to see that this is a subgroup, meaning centralizer of any given element is a subgroup because the centralizer of a set is intersection of those things and intersection of subgroups is a subgroup. 
So this is exactly like we argued the subgroupness of the center. Okay, so that's that. And now here is a very simple property. Let G be a group and S be any subset of G. Then we have this containment. S is in the centralizer of the centralizer of S. Why is that? So let, and just for clarity, let me call this maybe T. So let T be in capital T and S be in capital S. What we want to show that S commutes with T. So this is what we want to show, but T is in the centralizer of S because what is capital T? Capital T is the centralizer of S. So T is in the centralizer of S and thus we do have ST equals TS. T commutes with S. That's it. So it's a one line proof, nothing complicated going on. All right. Uh, lastly, the center of a group is the centralizer of the whole group because what is the center of the group? The center of the group is supposed to be those elements in the group which commute with every element of the group. What is uh, supposed to be the centralizer of G? It's also supposed to be the same thing. It is those elements of the group which commute with every element of the group. So therefore, these two things are the same. They are related concepts. Okay. A little bit, uh, little bit of a relaxation of the notion of centralizer is the notion of a normalizer. So again, G be a group and S be some subset of G. Then the normalizer of S is defined as those Okay, let me let me introduce a notation first. So for G in capital G, we denote, we write G S G inverse to mean the set given by this set builder form. So just pick an element in capital S and form this, this kind of thing is called a conjugate. Form this conjugate of S and collect all such things. So it's a very suggestive notation. And now we can define the normalizer. So the normalizer of S is defined as, this is the notation and this is those things in the group which do not necessarily commute with everything in S but sort of, you know, keep the set fixed. So you can also express this in this fashion, which will make the connection with centralizers clearer. Where what is what is this notation? This thing means this thing means GS S and S and this thing means SG S and S. So it's the same thing. Uh, meaning this guy and that guy are the same things and one can realize that. Uh, so that's the notion of a normalizer. So clearly, normalizer contains the centralizer. So it is a relaxed notion. And yeah, so I leave as an exercise for you to check that this is a subgroup. Sorry, what am I doing? This is a subgroup. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess and that's it. So these are some examples of subgroups that one can conceptually generate out of any group. All right, so as usual, like, comment, share, subscribe. Also have Patreon, the link is in the description below. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.